Ich kann euch zu Weihnachten nicht geben. Ich kann euch für den Grießbaum, wenn ihr überhaupt einen habt. I can give you nothing for Christmas. I cannot give you candles for your Christmas tree, if you even have one. I cannot give you bread. I cannot give you coal to heat. I cannot give you glass for your windows. We have nothing. However, I ask of you, believe in this Austria. This quote from Fiegel's Christmas address, less than a month after his election as chancellor, represents his will to pull Austrian citizens together and form a strong belief that Austria would stay a united country. Austria was currently split up into four areas of occupation, each controlled by one of the four allied powers of England, the United States, France, and the Soviet Union. Austrians were desperate and Fiegel recognized the danger such desperation could pose for the future of Austria. Leopold Fiegel's charming personality and fearless action as a leader gave him the characteristics that post-war Austria needed to transform under the real threat of permanent communism occupation and the division of the country. Fiegel leaves the legacies of a free and unified Austrian Republic and Austrian neutrality. During his life, Leopold Fiegel experienced many unique events that formed his personality which made him the leader he was. Fiegel's upbringing in Lower Austria gave him desirable traits such as all the strength and natural t dignity of a true peasant, but without the narrow outlook or unwillingness to speak and lead publicly that usually came with it. Before the Second World War, Austria was a deeply divided country, with no un unified national army. Political parties from the Christian Conservatives, the Socialists, to the Communists were forming paramilitary and cultural organizations. During this period, Fiegel was already an experienced politician and leader in Lower Austria of the Bauerbund, or Peasant Union Party, a form of Christian social conservatism, and their paramilitary and cultural branch, the Ostmachische Sturm Scharen. Fiegel was a staunch patriot who opposed the rising Nazi party within Austria and resisted the annexation of Austria into the German Reich. In 1938, hours into the German annexation of Austria, the Gestapo arrested Fiegel and he was sent to the Dachau, where he suffered the horrors of the Nazi concentration camp for five years. Being imprisoned by the Nazis and having to endure mistreatment together with the figures of the entire political spectrum made Fiegel appreciate the need to find political consensus later in life. Rook Shepard claimed that Austria's pre-war ideological rifts were healed in Austria's concentration camps. The present being unbearable, they talked about the future, and that meant burying the past. Uh, what has Fiegel hinterlassen? What is his Vermächtnis for Österreich? Fiegel was a patriot. Er war ein Patriot, der hat alles für Österreich getan. Er ist 1938 schon nach Dachau gekommen. Da war er vor fünf Jahren in KZ, dann ist er zurückgekommen. Hat sich aber wieder für die Bauern eingesetzt und auch Politik gemacht. Und so ist er nach dem Hitler-Attentat nochmal verhaftet worden. Da im Juni 1944 war das. Ne? Und da war er dann in Mauthausen. Mauthausen ist in Wien ins Landesgericht überstellt worden. Da ist ihm der Prozess gemacht im Jena. Und da wurde er zum Tode verurteilt. Und da war er dann von Jena bis April in der Todeszelle in Wien im Landesgericht. Bis die Russen einmal schon so. This meant that Fiegel's views became focused not on the well-being of a specific region or one group of people, but instead on the whole of Austria, which made him the leader that post-war Austria so desperately needed. In the year immediately following the end of the war, there was a large reorganization effort of the major pre-war Austrian political party. However, the first three elections were held on November 1945 with Fiegel's party, the OVP, or the Austrian People's Party, coming in at just over 50% of the vote. The SPO, or the Social Democrats, with 44% of the vote, and the Communists with only 5% of the votes. This had largely to do with the Austrian people's desire for reconciliation after the Nazi era and the communist strong anti-fascist message, which seemed to include anyone who did not agree with their political message. 
Da hat er ja die absolute Mehrheit gekriegt in 1945. Ne? Und die, waren eh die, die Russen, die waren ja ganz enttäuscht, weil sie glaubt haben, die Kommunisten haben die Mehrheit. Ne? Und das hat aber, die, der Fiegel hat das geschaffen. Ja. Waren die da? In Anfang waren sie schlimm, die ersten Monate, die es gekommen sind. Da waren sie schlimm, ja. Die Frauen haben sich dann verstecken müssen und sie haben alles mitgenommen, was, was mhm. nicht. Mehr. From 1945 to 1953, Leopold Fiegel led Austria as Chancellor. During this time, Austria's future remained in question. The Cold War had begun and the East-West conflict stood in the way of general reconciliation in Europe. Initially, the Western Allies, the United States in particular, were suspicious of the provisional Austrian government, which was formed without their influence. Siegel, due to his imprisonment during the Nazi occupation, was beyond the suspicion of fascism. Under these circumstances, Fiegel had to find a way to govern without tipping Austria too far to the west or to the east, provoking a conflict between the two world players with Austria as their battleground. The Soviets feared the possibility of Austria joining in the rapidly forming post-war NATO alliance. Although Fiegel and the majority of Austrians had opinions which were more favorable to the Western Allies, Fiegel always was aware that Austria was still divided under the Allied forces, that any move toward the West jeopardized the security of the Soviet-occupied areas. Brooke Shepherd attributes his success in managing the Allied forces to his charm, which he, quote, exerted in subtly different ways on the four contrasting Allied commanders who succeeded one another as his political masters. One of Fiegel's most defining moments as a leader was when he showed his integrity and fearlessness that was inside of him by telling a yelling Soviet general to watch his tone of voice when talking to the Federal Chancellor of Austria. These specific examples show how his personality and character convinced the people of Austria and the four Allied powers that he was the most suitable leader to transform and point Austria in the right direction for success. Und das andere zu dem West, zum Westen. Und der Friedel ist aufgestanden und gesagt, entweder ganz Österreich oder gar nicht. In 1953, when Fiegel resigned as Austrian Chancellor, Austria was still divided into four zones, each overseen by one of the occupational forces. In 1949, Germany had effectively split into two countries, and it looked like the same would happen to Austria. Fiegel became foreign minister several months after resigning as chancellor, and in the wake of Stalin's death in March of 1953, began negotiating with the Soviet commanders for a peace treaty. With Fiegel heading the Austrian delegation, the Soviets offered to give Austria full authority and to withdraw the Soviet administration, and in return, they wanted to maintain a presence of 5,000 men in Austria. Roman states that Fiegel rejected his occupying force, though he was willing to pledge his country's permanent neutrality. The American Secretary of State, John Foster Dahls, pushed Fiegel not to offer military neutrality to the Russians, but Fiegel saw this as the only chance to keep Austria undivided. Neutrality was to be a key piece of leverage in the battle for Austrian independence. Leopold Fiegel's legacies of an independent Austrian republic and Austrian neutrality are still present and affect Austrians every day. His roles in Austrian government prevented the threat of communism and he successfully negotiated Austrians' freedom from occupation, while neighboring Germany stayed divided until 1989. Austria celebrates October the 26th of 1956 the day the last Aust Allied soldier left Austria as a national holiday. This means that every year, Austria takes a day to remember Fiegel's legacy. Even decades after Fiegel's death, Austria is still ruled by coalitions of political parties by consensus in a democratic system. As Fiegel himself stated on May 15, 1955, after signing the state treaty for the re-establishment of an independent and dem democratic Austria, Österreich ist frei.